SAR. The School for Advanced Research. SAR is quite unique. There's absolutely nothing like it. SAR. The School for Advanced Research. We've got 100 years of extraordinary achievement behind us. The school is just this incredible gem. SAR. The School for Advanced Research. How would I describe SAR to someone that knew nothing about it? It's a learning environment. It's a kind of academic's heaven. This is a place where ideas can flourish. I call it an anthropological think tank, but it's much more than that. It's history. It's archaeology. It's a think tank with a soul. And yet we're more than a think tank because we have the Indian Arts Research Center, because we have the press, because we have a library. I mean, it goes on and on and on. We have a wonderful pottery collection. The collection is what draws people in to the school. And I think anybody that walks into that vault has that moment of, oh my God, I, I can't believe that this is here in Santa Fe at this institution. SAR supports and encourages the creative arts. The amount of things that go on here on a daily basis stagger the imagination. There are people working in different fields. I'm a Maya archaeologist. I'm a potter, sculptor. I'm an American cultural historian, and I work principally on the 19th century. I do monotype prints. I write. I am a cultural anthropologist. I'm a figurative painter. We're mixing scholars and artists together in a single location. There's no place like that. History, thought, and imagination. Those three aspects of what it means to be human are really at the core of the school. Today, the school focuses on the support of highly creative individuals in the social sciences, the humanities, and Southwest Native American artists. SAR was started in 1907. We are approaching our centennial. 100th anniversary. We are 100 years old. It came to be at the very moment that Americans were beginning to imagine that our archaeological and cultural heritage was something worth preserving. Up until that time, our resources were available to anyone to plunder. And it was started by a very charismatic, very bright, very energetic man named Edgar Lee Hewitt. And Hewitt wanted our resources to stay here. So he was the author of the 1906 Antiquities Act, the first piece of federal legislation that actually put the resources of North America into public ownership. Edgar Lee Hewitt's vision at the beginning was to establish an institution that supported archaeology provided an opportunity for young students to learn archaeology in the field. But gradually, it changed. For me, the sort of pivotal point in the history of the SAR is really when Doug Schwartz takes over. He was the first social scientist I had ever met who used the term research and the term creativity in a single sentence. My vision was to create a Center for Advanced Study an institution that would support creative scholars in anthropology and the humanities, support Native American artists, and develop a active publishing program. If I were gonna divide the school into three parts, I'm sure one of the most obvious is the scholarship. We could begin with the advanced seminar program. The advanced seminar program, where scholars come together for about a week, on a particular topic, sort of on the cutting edge of anthropology or related field. Scholars are used to working alone. So what SAR did was break that pattern and let people bounce ideas off of each other, learn from each other, challenge each other, and therefore move their discipline forward. Another academic program of SAR is the Resident Scholar Program. Well, the Resident Scholar Program funds six scholars for a nine-month academic year to write books or to complete a PhD dissertation. They provide the space to reflect, the space to write, the space to do research, and the free time to do that in, which as an academic, that's very hard to come by. There is the general program, which is a series of lectures that's open to the public. Equal in the eyes of the institution is the second area, and that is the Indian Arts Research Center. The Indian Arts Research Center, that's where people go and they get that bang. They walk into the vault and see this collection of Indian art that is unparalleled in the world. I was just mesmerized by the collection of the work. It's really awesome. The rugs, I mean, everything, everything down there, you could just spend days. I've worked in museums most of my life, and this is not a museum, and that's what makes it so unique. Not a museum 
but a research center in which scholars and Native American artists could come and interact with that collection. That then grew into our program of supporting those Native American artists. I got to live in this incredible place for two months. I was given a stipend, a studio, and access to their tremendous collection. The third part of the school would have to be our public access. Research not published is research not done. I think the press is central to what the school does. It has always been the place where the various pillars of thought, research, creativity, production come together and flow out into the publics that we try to reach. The first thing I think of when I think of the SAR is, is a beautiful campus. Which was owned by the White Sisters, who built it back in the 1920s and left it to SAR in 1972. It's a beautiful place. It's a place you like to be. It was in that first moment on campus that I thought, yeah, this is the place for me to be writing this book. There's something kind of magical. There's kind of an essence about the place. It's in the architecture, it's in the people here, but there is something that's kind of essentially Santa Fe. SAR is situated in Santa Fe. Santa Fe is not like anywhere else in the world. It's astoundingly beautiful. Santa Fe is certainly a place that scholars from all over the United States and all over the world want to come to. It's also, you could say, the capital of Indian art in the whole country. The impact of being in Santa Fe for SAR partly ties in with the strong interest in Indian arts, but more generally it ties in with the fact that the Southwest is a place for archaeologists and anthropologists. The Southwest borderlands in Santa Fe, I have always said, are one of the great seed beds for anthropological and historical inquiry. We're a complex borderland where people of diverse cultural and linguistic backgrounds came together. Being able to situate yourself for a year in that place with little other responsibility, SAR is unique in its ability to do that. Institutions like this are treasures. This is one of those organizations that brings together people and produces an exchange of ideas that wouldn't happen in any other place or in any other way. SAR is independent. That creates a kind of atmosphere for creative thought intellectual freedom. The school has increasingly moved its compass to embrace people beyond anthropology, historians, sociologists, political scientists, in order to create deeper conversations. The range and variety of perspectives that come into contact here, the kinds of conversations that can take place here, are completely unique. SAR has truly shaped the field of anthropology in remarkable and historic ways. Look at the number of advanced seminars. Look at the number of people who have been resident scholars here. Since 1968, we've had 110 advanced seminars. There have been 1,200 seminar participants. Since the resident scholar program began in 1972, we have now hosted over 175 scholars. Look at all of the career trajectories of those people, the work they've published, the kinds of students they've trained, and look at the ways that this has touched every area of anthropology. For all of these reasons, the school is absolutely essential to the field of anthropology, but it's also essential to intellectual life today. We're now a century old, and we think that SAR is just as necessary and urgently needed in the world in the century to come as it has been in the century past. For most of its history, SAR has been known as the School of American Research but the school has grown beyond its focus on the Americas, and we needed to consider a name change. We're in a good position. We're in a good position to grow. We're in a good position to become truly a global institution. SAR is looking globally at some of the major problems confronting peoples around the world. Racism, disease, cultural patrimony, and people being able to preserve their heritage. These are all issues that SAR is very keenly interested in having scholars here address. And we are taking a very active role in trying to disseminate that knowledge in a way which can be used by the general public, can be used by policymakers. It's the global human condition. I like to say that SAR is like no place else. I think we're a place in a unique place. There is no place like Santa Fe, New Mexico. But within that, we're also an idea, and that is that the social sciences and the humanities and the arts ought to be in the same vessel. And ultimately, we're a hope that serious contemplation of the human endeavor 
can actually lead to improvement of the human condition.